So now I'm going to be showing you how to make use of the built-in temperature sensor, the two LEDs still, and a buzzer as well. So the only thing I'm going to add to this here is a buzzer. And what is a buzzer going to be used for? I'm not going to write this in. I'm just going to say it. A buzzer is going to be an, um, an audible or an audio depiction of what the system is doing. For example, if it gets too cold for me, I want the buzzer to turn on. If it gets warm enough where the LED goes green, I want the buzzer to turn off. Because if it's cold, I need the system to come on. And if the system doesn't come on, I want to go turn it on myself. Um, why would we use a buzzer and an LED? Quite simply, some people have good sight or no sight. Some people have good hearing or no hearing. So for people that can see, they would see an LED go on, for example. And for people that can hear, they would hear the buzzer go off. So they have the option to either look at the system or simply listen out for the system. Those are the reasons why. Now here I've added block diagram as well. This is because for the unit six, BTEC Level 3 Engineering Microcontrollers, this is something I recommend people have in their Part 2 or Part 3. I don't remember which activity it is exactly. I'm going to go into my PowerPoint and I'm going to quickly, quickly create a block diagram. So to do that, I'm going to delete this. The PowerPoint is probably going to be the best software for creating most of your diagrams because every school has it. So to create a block diagram, I'm going to put my input, my processing and my output. So let me just label those sections quickly. So let's go insert uh, text box. Where's text box here? This side is going to be input. This side is going to, oh, they need to go insert again. Uh, let me just copy this one actually. Copy that one and put processing here. And on the right hand side, I'm going to put output. I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible. What's going to be for my input in this instance, it's only going to be my temperature sensor. So I'm going to go to insert again, go to shapes, and I'm going to go to rounded rectangle. And here I'm going to put a temperature sensor. Temperature sensor is going to be my input. Uh, my processing is obviously going to be my Raspberry Pi Pico. So I'll copy and paste that Raspberry Pi Pico here. R-A-S-P-B-E-R-Y, Pi, Pico, Raspberry Pi, Pico. And for my output, I'm going to have quite a few output devices in this case. I'm going to have red LED. I would separate these simply because you, these are separate components. So I would separate them. I'm going to have green LED. Uh, we're going to have in this, oh, in this one as well, we're going to have a buzzer. So buzzer is going to be the last thing down here. B-U-Z-Z-E-R. And then from here, I would simply just draw things and connect them using a simple line. So I would go back to insert. I would go back to shapes and I would go down to the arrow with, well, it's called line arrow. Let's just do that one. Or actually, yes, use elbow arrow. That's probably a better one. You move, let me zoom in. You move your mouse over where um, the shape is and you're going to see that box around it pop up with all the dots. You click and hold on a dot. You drag your arrow to the next shape until the dots pop up on the next one. And I'm going to change the, um, the weight of this one to about three or four so you guys can see clearly. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other side. But what I'm going to do first is copy that line, paste it, and then just attach it to my other components. So Raspberry Pi there goes to uh, red LED or it goes to green LED. And it goes to the buzzer as well. Now, ideally, in an ideal world, you'll be using logic gates for this as well. Because, for example, uh, let's say I have a temperature sensor or a motion sensor, right? Those would be fed into an OR gate or an AND gate. Goes into the Raspberry Pi. And from the Raspberry Pi, it's either going to be red LED and buzzer or green LED. So we would have an OR gate and an AND gate being fed into um, the output devices. But for this one, keep it simple. That's my my um, block diagram there. I'm going to just put that there, just make it look neat quickly. And I would just screenshot this and stick this into my Word document. So I'm going to screenshot that, go back to my Word document, block, oh, paste there, block diagram inserted. Let's close this. How do I get rid of this? Click on the X, block diagram inserted, and that's it. I'm done. Now I'm going to go, go over to my fritzing diagram. So let's save my Word document. Let's save my PowerPoint. Let's open my fritzing diagram now. So this is external LED buzzers. Um, I already have the circuit from a previous one I've done. So I only need to search for a buzzer in fritzing. So I'm going to go to the search bar if I can find it at the very top. Search and I'm going to search for oh, buzzer. B-U-Z-Z-E-R. See what comes up. Yeah. 
this one should be fine that's a nice simple one i'm gonna maybe do well let's see which pin i can use at the top now it's going to be messy if i use that one let me flip this round so click on it rotate 180 flip it round zoom out move down a bit uh positive i'm that needs to come from an actual pin so i think a good pin to use would be that very last one there so this one oh don't want to move that let's drag the line let me zoom in first from there that goes that's my positive pin and for the ground i can put it to that one there that should be okay so if i open also now keep in mind you always have to have a copy of this um somewhere so let me rotate this this is how my raspberry pi is actually plugged in on my board so if i zoom in and i look down here that's gpio 15 or gp15 but it's pin 20. so gp15 but pin 20. so i can close this now this is my fritzing diagram should be all finished so just to recap i have pin well gpio 15 going to my buzzer no resistors needed for this and we have the other line going to ground from my raspberry pi again i've got gp16 and gp17 going to leds green and red then they both go to ground as well and that's it you can also screenshot this so i would just bring my screenshot thing up and i would capture just that section there or you can export it i've shown this in previous videos you can go back to your word document now this is mainly for people doing btech level 3 engineering unit 6 but this this can just be for anyone wanting to document stuff in general this is a good way to do it you screenshot it and that's it you're done another thing that i would also do for this is i would explain the pin connections so i'm going to put pin connections down here and you would explain how things are connected and the way i would do this i would say for example from the raspberry pi uh from a s r a s p b e r y pico pi pico um gp 15 gp 15 which is also pin 20 on the raspberry pi goes to positive of the buzzer that's number one buzzer uh, ground goes to obviously ground of the pi pico so that would be pin pin three put that in brackets pin three um, next one i would have is gp16 so from raspberry pi pico gp separate that gp16 pin uh, 21 i believe goes to 330 ohm i believe i said ohm to green led then to ground pin of pi pico so i'm just describing how this is connected one of the reasons being this is an essential part of the activity three i believe for unit six btech level three engineering and I would do the same thing again, but I would do it for the red LED, so GP17 in this case, and it would be pin 22, I believe, 330 ohm, and this would go to a red LED, then to ground of the Raspberry Pi Pico, and the ground of the Pi Pico again is pin 3, I'm going to use the same one for all of them, make it simple for me, pin 3, and what else do I have? I don't have anything else, so I could leave it like this. So again, let me just quickly go over my document. Again, this is mainly stuff for people doing BTEC Level 3 Engineering. So you have your parts list on the left here of this table. Let me zoom in. And on the right, we have the justification. So why have we used that device? I've explained why we need the buzzer. It's going to be an audible representation of what the system is doing. If it beeps once, maybe the green LED is on. If it beeps twice, maybe the red LED is on. If it beeps at all, if it just beeps once, and um, that means the red LED could be on, the system's too cold. And if it doesn't beep at all, everything is okay. We have our block diagram here we have the input we have the processing and we have the output the input would come from our temperature sensor in this case the processing would be done by the raspberry pi pico and the output would come from the red led green led and the buzzer and then further down we have our fritzing circuit diagram now it doesn't have to be like this you can just draw a normal circuit diagram so if i go back to fritzing quickly and i go over to where it says schematic this is how you would do an actual circuit diagram I don't like the way this looks personally, but this is the best way to do it if you're saying it's a circuit diagram or a schematic. But for the purpose of the exam, Fritzing diagram is perfectly okay. And this is a lot easier for students to understand because this looks exactly like how I would connect it on my breadboard, more or less. And let me go back to my document. And after I have my Fritzing circuit diagram, I'll 
change that screenshot actually i'm going to go down to my pin connections and i have to simply describe or state what pins are connected to what this is not the very best way to do it i was just trying to be quick here but this is how i would do it so this part up here that's for the buzzer so i'll put maybe buzzer here and put, make that bold and this part is for uh, leds and that's the only thing I really have connected to my system at the moment. Later on, when I connect stuff like the LCD, I'm going to have an LCD section here and I describe how it's connected to the Raspberry Pi Pico. So that's it for the document. I'm going to move over now to actually programming the Raspberry Pi Pico to control the LEDs and the buzzer. I am back with the circuit for my Raspberry Pi Pico. And the only thing I've added from my previous videos is this line, if I can get to it. This line here going from pin 20 or GPIO 15, I believe, from the Raspberry Pi. It goes over to here, and I have a ground going in as well. So this goes to ground, and all I'm gonna do is simply attach this tiny device here. This is a buzzer, by the way. Oh, there we go. It should operate from five volts, but these somehow, they operate from 3.3 as well. So the Raspberry Pi is perfectly okay of putting um, output to these. So I make sure it's lined up. The left-hand side is a positive, and the right-hand side is a negative. I plug that in like so, and that's it. That's my circuit finished. So just like I did it on the actual Raspberry Pi P code circuit diagram in Fritzing, it's connected in exactly the same way. Going from pin 20 on the Raspberry Pi Pico there, over to pin 35 on the breadboard, and pin 38 there goes to ground, exactly how I have it on the circuit diagram. Just looks slightly different because it's in a different physical location. But that's it, it's done. Now I'm gonna go back to my computer now and actually program this to work. Okay, so here I am back on my PC. Raspberry Pi is still here. I'm gonna go to Thunny and open my code, plug my Raspberry Pi Pico into my PC. There we go. Uh, change this from Python to the Raspberry Pi Pico. That's now connected. And if I go to LED, so this is the program I wrote earlier. And again, I've only been adding a few things to my program. So for example, here, I've got buzzer equals pin 15. And I say set up the buzzer to be output on pin 15 or GPIO 15, my apologies. It's GPIO 15, but pin 20 of the Raspberry Pi Pico. So this is how you set up your buzzer. And I still make use of the pin library. I say buzzer equals pin 15, and it's gonna be pin out, meaning output. And that's it, there's nothing else I need to do. To actually turn the buzzer on and off, what I've actually done, let's see if I've done this the right way. Um, under if temperature is greater than 23, actually I don't need the buzzer on here. I made a slight mistake, but that's fine. I've said I high here, I'm gonna change this to low, buzzer dot low, and under elif, I'm gonna change this one to high. So when I say high here, I'm then gonna save this. And what should happen when my when my LED turns on? Uh, no buzzer is sounded, obviously. And when the LED goes off, when it's red, when the red LED comes on instead, the buzzer should go on telling me uh, in an audible manner that, listen, there's something going on with the system. So that should be it. I'm gonna press F5 on my keyboard now to run this. Now pay attention, one of these LEDs should go on. I don't know what the temperature in this room now is. So when I press F5, okay, red LED comes on, perfect because it's below. So once it goes above 23, that should go off. You should be able to hear that beeping buzzing sound. I'm gonna place my finger on it to make it go higher, make the temperature increase. And that red LED should go off and the buzzer should also stop. There we go. Keeps jumping back and forth because it's cooling down quickly. But once my hand stays on it long enough and it stays hot, then we know it's working. Yeah, that's fine. Here we go. Now it's over 24, it's over 23, so that constantly stays off. That's how you get your buzzer to work. Now I'm incorporating the buzzer with another system because it just makes sense to do it this way. You can have the buzzer working completely by itself. Only thing you would have to do is remove the LED functionality and it would work just the same. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that was useful.